Hi, it's Lauren here, and I'll ask you a question today. Have you ever experienced imposter syndrome? You may or may not have heard of the term, but imposter syndrome is where you feel like an imposter or a fake or a fraud, or perhaps you have self-doubt that bubbles up, that makes you feel like you don't really deserve to be in the position you're in or to receive the accolades that you've received or the feedback or the thanks that you've been given. And I want to tell you today that this syndrome and this experience is very normal and incredibly common. And I'm the first to admit that I suffer from imposter syndrome. And it especially strikes whenever you do something that's stretching you or growing you out of your comfort zone and you're doing something new. So I'm thinking of this today because over the last few weeks I've been working furiously to get things launched for the Thrive TV show. And while I've been doing this, I've also been experiencing these huge moments of self-doubt as I put myself out there, as I ask myself, who do I think I am? You know, I sort of, it's like a little voice on my shoulder saying, who do you think you are, Lauren, to go and launch your own TV show? Are people really going to watch it? Is anyone really going to be interested? Who do you think you are? And, you know, Amy Cuddy shared about this beautifully in her TED Talk, one of the most watched TED Talks of all time, which is actually about a different topic. She's talking about how our body and our posture determines the success and the outcomes in our life. But towards the end of her talk, she shares about how she actually was in a car accident and suffered a traumatic brain injury. And it actually impacted on her IQ level. And it caused her not to be able to do the same level of study that she'd previously done. It took a long time for her to recover. And because so much of her identity was linked to her intelligence, she said that after that moment, after that experience, that actually really impacted on her, made her feel like she wasn't actually really good enough to be where she was at, to be in the school and the college that she was in. And that she went through that and she discovered this, the key to working through it, which is actually to fake it till you become it. Not just to try and fake it till you make it, because we know if we just fake and phony, it'll just enlarge that feeling. But to fake it till you become it. To look at the people that are doing the things that perhaps you want to do, to see how they do it, and to go ahead and copy and model off the way that they do things. To show up in the way that, let's say, a successful person that's nailed X, Y, Z, whatever your goal is, to start doing the things that that person would do. And eventually you'll find out that you are actually doing those things consistently. The other thing is to know that the way that other people perceive you, perhaps sometimes people are saying, wow, that's amazing what you're doing there. If part of you is not receiving that, to so realise that perception can be reality. That if other people see you as being confident, then you do come across as confident. If people see you as being inspiring or encouraging, that you are inspiring and encouraging. If if other people see you as being, wow, so adventurous, then you are adventurous, if that's what you want to be. I'm not trying to put some labels on you that you don't want. But sometimes in life, we get labelled different things that aren't helpful for us. I know that I was labelled shy when I was a child, and I started to believe that I was shy. But actually, sometimes we need to choose our own labels. So I want to give you one small strategy today that can also help you if you're suffering from imposter syndrome. And this is something that I have to do for myself because, as I say, I am a sufferer. I'm happy to stand here and say, my name's Lauren, and I suffer from imposter syndrome. And it just rears its head at different times, but particularly if I'm trying to stretch or grow or step to the next level. So you may relate to that. And it can be in any area of your life. It can be in your work or in your personal life, in your relationships, anything. So one strategy that I have is to create positive feedback loops for yourself so that you can get regular evidence that shows you that what you're doing really matters. So one that I do is each time that I receive an email out of the blue, which just happens from time to time, I'll actually click the forward button and I will copy and paste the text so it captures the date and who it's from, and I'll copy and paste it into just a little Word document that I have for myself called Spontaneous Feedback. And I just keep adding to that from time to time. And I've done it for the last number of years, actually. It just evolved over time and what I found is it gives me this amazing document it has the store of 
fantastic feedback from people about lives that I've changed, about people that I've touched, about people that feel so encouraged, people sharing concrete examples of the things that they've done or what an impact it's made for their family. And oh my goodness, you know, when I receive those messages, it just makes my day and it's so uplifting. But if I don't read, read it again, then I'm easily going to forget it because that's how our human brain works. It would be overloaded if we could remember everything in crystal clear detail. So I record these little spontaneous feedback emails into a document and then every so often, guess what? I go back and read over it. We also get lots of feedback forms actually every time I speak, I aim to get feedback forms and I've got a folder now where I keep those. Sometimes I can just flip back through them so that if I'm having a moment when I'm down, when I'm low, when I'm doubting myself, because those moments certainly do come for me, I can go back and look at that concrete evidence. I can get out of my head, out of the worry and the anxiety and actually speak truth to it through the words that others have shared because their perception is reality. If somebody emails me and tells me that it's changed their life, then I'm just trusting that it has changed their life. So I share that with you, and now you may not be a speaker, you may not have feedback forms, you may not get spontaneous emails like that, but there will be a way that you can get feedback that comes through. Perhaps it's looking at the Mother's Day cards that tell you what an amazing mum you actually are. You know, because there's some other days when our children can say mean and hurtful things to us, and because we love them the most, they really dig deep, and they really cut deep when they say unkind things in a moment of frustration. But when you look back at the things that your children say of you as a parent, as a mother, as a father, on those cards, perhaps they're even prompted by their teachers, perhaps. But, you know, if you look at the things that they say to you and about you in those moments, I encourage you to seek out those sort of opportunities to find evidence that reinforces the value that you have. Because I have to tell you this, my friend, you are amazing right now just the way that you are and you don't need to compare yourself to anyone else and you don't need to be like anyone else because you are perfectly okay in your imperfection perfectly okay in your imperfection you are enough you're unique you're precious you're amazing just the way that you are and there will be ways for you to find evidence of that and to remind yourself of that so I encourage you to do that. It could actually even just be from within, from yourself, that if you can find a moment when you can reflect and just imagine that you're perhaps looking outside of yourself, looking at yourself and thinking of all the things that you actually really like about you. Perhaps think back to when you're a child and think about all the things that you like when you see the child version of you and roll that forward. There are amazing qualities and unique gifts and abilities that you have, that only you have, really the unique, unique combination that you have, and they are awesome and amazing. So I encourage you to remind yourself of those today, and whether it's through external validation that reminds you, that gives you evidence, or your own thoughts towards yourself. If you, as I say, look at yourself as if you are your best friend and speak positive words over yourself. And as you do that, it's going to help to remind you that you are enough right now. And that you don't need to let self-doubt or anxiety or worry consume you. Also, it can be really heartening to know that it's normal, that this is totally normal, that if some of the top people in the world, most successful athletes and uh, leaders and business people all suffer at some level from self-doubt, phenomenal, phenomenal people whose books I've read, whose TED Talks I've watched, if they suffer from self-doubt, if little old me, little old you, you know, we're all just in this together. So it's normal, it's okay, but you don't need to let it rule your life. So I hope that's an encouragement to you today. I encourage you to make sure you go away and don't just listen to this and do nothing, but take a step, take an action. Perhaps go and write down five things right now that you like about yourself. Perhaps think about how you can set up a positive feedback loop so that you are reinforcing the evidence. And remember, it's okay to have self-doubt sometimes. The key thing is to work through it and to know that you're okay, that you're going to be okay. This too shall pass and you are amazing just the way that you are. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Lauren Parsons. Go out, have a fantastic day and go out and thrive.